In today's cartoon, Millie Featherbottom, the town gossip queen, discovered that karma can be a real chatterbox. Hold on to your hats, or bonnets, if you're Millie, for more small town antics, where the biggest unsolved mystery is still Mayor Higgins' humming repertoire. Is it show tunes, cult chants? We may never know. Ah, small towns and their gossip, where the biggest excitement is usually the annual pie contest. Third place goes to Mrs. Henderson again, bless her heart, but that crust, Cardboard City. And everyone knows everyone's business better than their own laundry detergent preferences. Now, news travels fast in the city, sure, but in a small town? Forget Twitter, it's Mabel down at the bakery with a fresh croissant and a side of piping hot gossip. Mabel knows who borrowed Mrs. Peabody's hedge clippers. It was young Billy Johnson, bless his tinker-prone soul, why Mr. Thompson's prize-winning pumpkin mysteriously exploded last Halloween. Turns out raccoons have a taste for the finer gourds. And the real reason Mayor Higgins keeps humming show tunes in the town square. It's not karaoke night practice, nope, not at all. Alrighty, gossip lovers, buckle up for today's chuckle. Seems Millie Featherbottom, the human rumor mill, got a taste of her own medicine, and let's just say, it wasn't grandma's prune juice. Let's dish the dirt. Mildred Millie Featherbottom was a woman who believed information was power and gossip was her personal superpower. As the self-proclaimed guardian of the First Baptist Church's morals, Millie knew everyone's business, or at least her embellished version of it. From the shade of Mrs. Periwinkle's new curtains to the questionable amount of time young Harold spent bird watching by the creek, Nothing escaped Millie's watchful eye, and even more watchful ear. Now, the good folks at First Baptist mostly tolerated Millie. They knew better than to cross her. A raised eyebrow from Millie could turn a minor mishap into a full-blown morality play. But Millie, bless her heart, had a nose for trouble that rivaled a truffle pig. And trouble came in the form of a quite man named Mike Johnson. Mike, a recent widower, had moved to Charlottesville a few months prior. He wasn't much for talking, preferring the company of his trusty pickup truck, a beat-up Ford named Rusty, to idle chatter. This, of course, made him a cipher in Millie's world. A blank page, simply begging to be filled with exciting and likely scandalous details. One sunny Wednesday afternoon, Millie was out for her daily walk, a mission that often included a strategic loop past the Rusty Nail, Charlottesville-only pub. As fate would have it, she spotted Rusty parked outside. Now, Millie knew full well that a car parked outside a pub doesn't automatically equate to its owner being inside knocking back beers. But for Millie, a suspicious mind was a fertile mind, and a juicy story was about to sprout. The next morning at Bible study, Millie couldn't contain herself. Between discussions on the importance of tithing and the evils of premarital handholding, she dropped her bombshell. Did anyone see Mike Johnson's truck outside the rusty nail yesterday? She inquired, her voice dripping with faux concern. A collective gasp rippled through the room. A few exchanged nervous glances. Poor Mike, oblivious to the brewing gossip storm, sat quietly taking notes. Millie, emboldened by the shocked silence, continued. Such a shame, really, a newcomer falling into such temptations. We must all pray for his soul. Mike, still silent, absorbed the veiled accusations. He finished his note-taking, then slowly rose and met Millie's gaze with a look that could curdle milk. But instead of the expected outburst or denial, Mike simply turned and walked out. Millie, momentarily stunned, puffed up her chest. See, the man is clearly ashamed, she declared, but a seed of doubt had been planted. Later that evening, as Charlottesville settled into its nightly quiet, a familiar rumble echoed down Elm Street. It was Mike, back in his truck, but instead of heading home, he pulled up right outside Millie's picture-perfect picket fence and parked. Millie, peering out her window, saw the truck and felt a flicker of unease. Mike climbed out, 
not a beer bottle in sight, and simply walked away. Rusty sat there all night, bathed in the soft glow of Millie's porch light. Every creak of its rusty frame, every groan of its aging engine, seemed to echo Millie's growing anxiety. Sleep evaded her that night. By morning, the entire town was buzzing with a new mystery. What was Mike doing parked outside Millie's house all night? The following Sunday, Mike finally addressed the elephant in the room, or rather, the truck in Millie's driveway. During the service, he stood up, his voice a low rumble. There seems to be some confusion about my truck. Yes, it was parked outside the pub, but I wasn't drinking. I was there for a job interview, fixing the leaky roof. He paused, letting the silence settle. And yes, it was parked outside Millie's house all night, because after seeing my truck outside a place I wasn't even in, I decided to give her a taste of her own medicine. Millie's face, the color of a ripe tomato, crumpled. The congregation erupted in suppressed laughter. From that day on, Millie's gossip took on a decidedly less accusatory tone. And Mike? Well, Mike and Rusty became regulars at the First Baptist Church, though thankfully, never parked outside again. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>